In our last topic, we talked about how to help those you lead learn to develop both personal goals and goals for ministry. Today, we are going to talk about how to develop the biblical process to reach those goals. In Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 15, we read, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. In verse 13, we see the result, or goal, is that all those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. However, we see that to reach this goal, there is a process that needs to be followed. That process is, develop the goal, and then work backwards to determine the steps to reach that goal. We will illustrate that process from these verses. The goal is that people call on the Lord and are saved. The previous step is that people must believe before they can call. The previous step is that people must hear before they can believe. The previous step is that a person must share in order for people to hear. The step before that is that a person will not share until he knows he has been sent. Once we have worked backward to where we are presently at, then we can explain the step-by-step -step process to reach biblical goals. Using the goal given above, the steps to reach that goal are now clearly defined. We need to help Christians know that they are sent to share the gospel. We need to help Christians know what they are to share with those who are not yet Christians. We need to help Christians learn to answer any questions that might keep the person from hearing. We need to help Christians be able to clearly explain to a person what he or she must do in order to call on the Lord. And we need to help Christians learn how to invite people to call on the Lord in repentance and faith. In some cases, the major steps of the process are already given in order for us. A good illustration of that is found in 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 through 17. Those verses tell us, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. In these verses, we see that the goal Christ has is for every Christian to become complete or mature and equipped for every good work. We see that this will happen if a person is becoming familiar with all scripture, allowing the scripture to teach him God's standard or doctrine, allowing the scripture to show him each of the areas where he comes short or reproof, allowing the scripture to show him the steps to correct those areas where he comes short, which is correction, allowing the scripture and Christians who provide godly examples to become the models he follows in his life. As you can see, this process of becoming mature and equipped for every good work involves Christians explaining the Word of God and providing their own example as a model for the younger Christians to imitate. In 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, Paul said, Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. In 1 Thessalonians 1.6, Paul, Silas, and Timothy said, And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the Word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. These provide us with two excellent examples of how we help developing leaders learn to develop a process to reach biblical goals. By definition, a leader is someone who has one or more persons following him. Otherwise, the person is just taking a walk. A biblical leader is one who has one or more people who are spending time with him and learning to imitate Christ because they are seeing the life of Christ modeled by the one who is leading them. A biblical leader is one who is investing his time in the lives of a few people to help them become more like Christ. Today, there are many people who have become Christians, but have not matured. That is due to the fact that many Christians are trying to lead the church following the model of the world, where people are told what to do. As we mentioned in an earlier topic, Exodus 18.20 illustrates the fact that people need to learn the word of God and gain knowledge, to be shown the way to walk and grow in character, and to be shown the work to do and grow in ministry. Today, many Christians have never been shown the way to walk and have never been shown the work to do. If our goal is life transformation, and it is, see Romans 12 too, then we cannot be biblical leaders if we are only teaching Bible knowledge. 
The process to reach biblical goals must include spending time with individuals in small groups to give them an example to follow. As that happens, that individual or small group will develop and mature in character and ministry. The process of providing a biblical model of what we are teaching is the key to the development of a process to reach biblical goals. This is why it is so important that we pray and ask the Lord to guide us to those individuals in whom we will invest a major portion of our time. The people that Christ leads us to invite to become a part of our spiritual family now have the same privilege of access to us that our physical family has to us. This is demonstrated in Luke 6, verses 12 through 13, Mark 3, 13 through 14, and also Mark 3, 31 through 35. We have been led by the Lord to invest much time in them so they can become transformed disciples. We are inviting these people to become our Timothys and look forward to the time when they will also begin investing their lives in the transformation of others. One personal prayer might be to ask the Lord to give you an average of one new Timothy each year. Helping our spiritual family develop a process to reach biblical goals that includes spending much time with one or a few Timothys is learned through example. As we take individuals or small groups with us as we minister to others, they are hearing what we say, seeing what we do, and seeing the results in the lives of others. If we are providing a godly example, they will be developing godly character. If we are providing an example of effective ministry, they will be learning how to do effective ministry. Each Christian has a unique spiritual shape. S stands for spiritual gift. H stands for heart or passion for ministry. A is abilities. P is personality. And E is experiences in life. As we help each of our spiritual family grow in their knowledge of the Word of God, grow in godly character, and grow in ministry effectiveness, we will see that helping them develop a process to reach biblical goals will give them the opportunity to develop the full potential of their spiritual shape. The ministry of each person will be much different from ours because of the fact that God has given them a different shape than He has given us. However, each will develop the ministry God has prepared for them. In case you have never done so in your personal Bible study, you may want to see if you can identify at least 30 of the people who became a part of the spiritual family of Paul and traveled with him. A couple of passages to help you get a good start on such a project are Acts 16 verses 1 through 3, Acts 18 verses 18 through 19, and Acts 20 verse 4. You might even find it exciting to list the Roman province from which they came, and even the languages the team may have spoken. The Lord will greatly multiply your ministry as you help your spiritual family develop a personal process for reaching biblical goals. May the Lord richly bless you as you walk with others through the process of developing biblical goals for their lives. Mm -hmm.